as well. Let's rejoin the Thompson twins in the Record Guide Spotlight. Uh, can you tell us about your time in India? In India? What do you want to know about India? Going into seventh heaven here. Yes, right. Get to talk about How long India. have we got? I'll go sleep. Um, uh, I was lucky enough by accident or fate or whatever to end up in India about ten years ago with a lot of time on my hands and nothing better to do but to uh, find out all about it. And I found it inspirational. To this day it remains one of my favorite places on the planet and we'll go back there as often as I can. I think mostly because, let's see, I think as Westerners, especially uh, people like Lara and myself are totally immersed in the high-tech uh, Western lifestyle, it's fascinating to go somewhere and see very plainly a completely alternative lifestyle, something that's so different from our own that uh, it's both shocking and inspiring at the same time. I think India has something to learn from the West, but we certainly have something to learn from India in terms of uh, the way we can live our lives. And for example, I'd say one of the most powerful ones that you see there is that there's a dignity in poverty I think here in the West we always think, well, you know, if people are poor, it's just about as low as you can get to be in poverty. And it's simply not true, you know, and to, and to see thousands, if not millions of people living on what we would consider to be an unbearable level of poverty and still with a great dignity, a sense of pride in themselves and a happiness. And a great wealth in spiritualism as well. I think that's something really important. and. and it's uh, restorative in the sense that you think, yeah, there's more to this life than just how much money you can collect. Yeah, and I was being really rude to Tom earlier. But in fact, I mean, because I've been hearing these stories from him of India for the last 10 years, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, India, India, right, right, right. And then just this Christmas um, and New Year, I decided, we decided, let's go in the middle of making close to the bone album. Just let's get on a plane and go and see what happens. And we only went for three weeks, I think. And it was the first time I'd been there. It was amazing, just the most amazing place I've ever been. The colors, the smells, and the people. Um, I don't know how to explain. It's like you can't really explain the place. Everybody just has to go there and see. Yeah, if you get the chance, go. Tom, I understand you almost died in India. What happened? I became very ill in India. Um, and in a very remote place. So that was interesting. I couldn't uh, turn to the nearest uh, well-equipped hospital and say, okay, guys, fix me up. I'm, I'm ill. I just had to go through it in a very uh, alone and perhaps scary way using sort of folk medicine up in the Himalayas. And uh, sure enough, I recovered. But uh, I think, you know, if you get very ill to the point where you think you might die, it's one thing being like in your hometown with friends and family and all the rest of it around it, but being totally alone at the top of a Himalayan mountain, you figure out some things about yourself. And it was really funny. I mean, when we went back there, the, the monks that had looked after you when you were sick, we met one of these um, men, and we, we were trying to explain to him. He sort of said, well, what do you do? And, and we sort of said, well, we make this pop music. And he just looked at us totally curiously and said, well, pop music, what is it? And he had no concept of what pop music was, which is great. And then he thought for a while and he turned around and he said, oh, Tom, so you make Dixo music. And Dixo music was like disco music because music is very much part of movies in India. And he'd heard this thing, Dixo music, which was sweeping the nation. And um, his whole face lit up and he sort of, so he stumbled aside. It was really mm. sweet, it was really nice. And that is the vast difference, you know? I mean, there are people living there who just know nothing about hits and videos and anything else that means nothing to them and that in itself is pretty good in this day and age how did that affect your music tom um well as i said you know india was an inspiration to me um the first time i was there i studied indian music and i mean i think it it's had an effect right on down the line. I mean, there are some some of our songs, like uh, Into the Gap, for example, where you can hear that Indian form quite clearly, and some less clearly, I suppose. But uh, it's affected me a great deal, especially in the rhythm department. 
I think that's... Um, would you not agree? I would agree, darling. Cry boy, cry boy, just makes me weep. <laughs> I'm Elena Curry. My name's Tom Bailey. We're the Thompson Twins. And we've got a secret, so stay tuned for Record Guide Star Secrets. Marsha wants to know, Alana and Tom, when you write a song, do you think of what it will look like as a video? No, we don't think how it would look in a video, but we do um, tell stories when we're writing because I write the lyrics and Tom writes the music and we talk about songs a lot as we're writing them and create sceneries and scenarios um, and talk about the characters in our songs. I mean, they have whole lives and th which don't necessarily, you don't know about when you listen to the song, but we invent these lives for these people. So very much it's a visual thing. Every song we have has a certain color. I think if videos didn't exist, we'd still uh, use a sort of visual language to explain our ideas to each other and not also our, yeah. not not only us do that i mean a lot of very um famous producers and people like a lot of people we've found actually talk in visuals as much as they do in music because talking in music you know um is pretty boring talking in imagination is much more exciting mm, that's why they call it the blues <laughs> It's time for another Record Guide track fact. Okay, with what Bob Marley song did Eric Clapton have a number one hit in 1974? Stay tuned for the answer, America. Now, uh, here's a Record Guide track fact for you. It was Eric Clapton that had a number one hit with Bob Marley's song, I Shot the Sheriff, in 1974. But he did not shoot the deputy. I saw you there. Just standing there. Great, thanks for watching the all new record guide. I'm Alana Curry and this is the fabulous Tom Bailey. We're the Thompson twins. <laughs> Tune in again next time to see more of this great music and hot hits. And we'll see you on the road or we'll see you when we make our next record or we'll see you on our next video or something. And until then, here's some more great music. <laughs>